morning, guys. I'm sitting with John Lehman, who I just met through a friend. Uh, John did something pretty cool when he was young, bought his first duplex, and we're just going to talk to him about it a little today and hear what he has to say and hopefully help some young people looking to do the same. So thanks for sitting down. You want to just introduce yourself and maybe a little background? Yeah, no, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so name's John. Um, I am currently a senior college studying finance and economics. And growing up, I um, was pretty much just trying to figure out what I wanted to do long term. Ended up with some pretty ambitious goals. Um, <laughs> That's good. So now it's just trying to figure out how to finance it and how to honestly um, be able to work where I want to work without necessarily having to worry about money eventually. And then going through college, ended up looking at my tuition statement and kind of how they break out all the cost structure. And I was paying like $1,500 a month um, just for room and board. And I was still sharing the room with someone else. <laughs> it's pretty typical for college, right? For a dorm situation, yeah. it's usually more than even average rent in mm -hmm. the town you live in. So, yeah. So then um, decided to contact uh, my mother and was like, hey, this is what I'm currently paying. I think we could go in on a house together. And which we eventually did. We got a duplex. And the mortgage ended up being lower than my what I was paying for room and board. That's awesome. So you had not really a complex problem, just a problem that you realize, oh my, you know, I'm paying a lot for rent, not yeah. getting a lot, and I'm never getting any of this money back. So mm -hmm. you just found a pretty simple solution to, to fixing that. And now, do you mind going in a little bit now? And you don't have to say specific numbers, but just tell people like, how your, your duplex is kind of situated and where you live and stuff like that. Yeah, so the way we have um, the duplex structured is it's divided between um, the first unit being the first floor and then the second unit is the second floor. They both have separate entrance and exits so you don't have to worry about like, um, well, interacting with the other tenants, sure. let's say. And then the second floor, um, ha so they both have two rooms, a living room, a dining room, a kitchen, a bathroom, and then they both have um, separate different accesses to the basement, which has nice. washer dryer set up and general storage so that's area. Shared. Yeah. And then in addition, the second floor has an attic. It is a finished attic. Um, the only thing about that one, it's not um, fully up to code, so the attic itself isn't rentable. So what ended up happening is I'm living in the attic. So then we don't have to worry about the rental code since I'm claiming that half the duplex as um, residential. Good. Good solution. Yeah. And so when you collect all the rents, does it cover the whole mortgage and all your expenses? Uh, yeah. So it um, covers the mortgage. We do have a management company which has like a 10% commission, um, covers that, covers the expenses. And then we're usually left with somewhere around 30% of 30, um, depending on the month. I guess it might be better to give a range between like 25 to 40 percent depending on the month so now you're not just living for free you are taking away some chunk of change and it's either covering your utilities or your living expenses or groceries or something like that so before you're paying fifteen hundred dollars a month just to live now you're living for free and maybe even some spending money in your pocket um, yeah, um, so personally I don't really put it towards spending. I currently um, am just putting it towards an account to either eventually find another property or to um, make like general repairs like, hey, do we want to replace the roof or yep. something along that line. Very smart. So yeah, good for you. Good don't need you. it right now, so just putting it away. Yeah, excellent. What do you think, um, you know, your next step is? Like obviously now this gives you the leverage to keep it or sell it, but you know, do you see yourself keeping it and maybe buying a single family home for yourself to live in or you're going to stay there a little longer? Or? Yeah, so honestly, um, it depends on lot, what's coming up um, this coming year. So I'm graduating, getting married next year. So i um, looking for a residential. I wouldn't mind continue living in like an apartment like style, but sure. I do eventually want to start a family. So looking into uh, um, one family homes. Um, honestly, I'd love to keep the duplex. It, so a lot of it hinges on kind of the work I'm going to end up going into these coming next few months. Um, looking, So I've been doing like a lot of research just on like what are average salaries for first time employment of various jobs um, and then also kind of where we end up. But hopefully like the 
re- buying my own residential place and then getting married as a small blip before getting more investment properties and then continuing to build off. Cool. What would you say was the biggest hurdle of buying the property? Like when you sat down, you know, was it just figuring out the numbers or getting your mind around the idea of, of you know, potentially owning a home yourself? What was maybe your biggest hurdle? And then uh, the backside of that, just explaining kind of how you worked through it. Yeah. So the biggest one was I initially was planning on getting a pro- rental property myself, um, not a duplex, but like a single house with multiple bedrooms and just running out to roommates um, and then doing that based off of um, my own resources and income. And I was going kind of looking at the mortgage process to see what I could afford given my income and then just realize while I have enough money saved up and I could personally save up enough money to pay off the mortgage and then have the tenants um, can't count the tenants towards as in, you can't count future tenants towards income of a mortgage. Gotcha. So I didn't quite meet the uh, gross income qualifier. Gotcha. So that's when I contacted my mother. I'm like, hey, um, I can get the entire thing covered in regards to like tenant payments. I can cover it myself. Um, the only issue is I just need to essentially use her signature and yeah. her income to show. That you can be tip. pre-approved. Yeah. Yeah, gotcha. So that was the biggest thing. Um, making that switch and realizing that's what I needed to solve. Um, and then I'd say the other big adjustment was I underestimated how much the initial renovations and repairs would be to gotcha. get it, the property up to code to make sure I could rent it. Got it. Um, first time. So at first I was thinking like, okay, maybe five grand to get things going. Yeah. Ended up being closer to 10. Yeah. One, one really good rule of thumb in both remodeling and what you're talking about, just a rehab basically is whatever the number is, uh, in a worst case scenario, double that number, and that's probably going to be where you're at. So yep. the, I did it to myself. My first rental property, I figured you know expenses would be about eight grand. They were about thirteen. So just to just to like proof yourself for the last or the uh, worst case scenario, either put that money aside or know where it's coming from, so that you, you've got the funds and you're not shocked when you get to the end and you're like, wow, we <laughs> overspent by five thousand dollars. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, so you bought it in 2020, now we're in 2022, two years looking back, like, was it a great investment, just an okay investment? Uh, you know, all the factors, did it teach you something? Did it make you more confident? You know, like those types of things. Oh, no, honestly, um, it was a great investment because not only in, do I now have an avenue for like future investing, but like it got my family into it. And now kind of like my extended family are interested, like, oh, he did it. It's yeah. two years later, and he's yeah. not, like, broke. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> and, and if he did it, I probably can do it. Exactly. You know, it's peer pressure. Mm-hmm. And then some of my other people at my university are kind of interested in that line of work. I actually have um, um, one of my uh, other students that I'm pretty good friends with. He's been talking about, like, hey, how do I get into this? I'm looking at doing something similar to you. And so we're kind of moving forward with that. Now on more of the financial, like return on investment side, um, considering I'm not spending $1,500 a month for six months in a year Crazy. for the uh, college living. Um, I mean, that alone saved me eighteen to $22,000. And that, that doesn't even include like the actual revenue from the house or the sure. increased equity yeah, in the property. Yeah, savings, that's pure savings. Yeah which when you look at it from a long term, I'm, I'm a deep thinker and I often think of how much faster will this get me to retirement? Yeah. You know, that really is everybody's goal. That's a lot of why a lot of people buy properties. It's either to supplement their income or to have income when they want to retire. Well, mm-hmm. that $22,000 compounded over the next 40 or 50 years is going to probably <laughs> be in the millions of dollars. Oh, you yeah. Know? Um, which, again... And you, you think of it as a small investment, that one property, it's going to change your life if you don't think it hasn't mm-hmm. already. It, it it really has and will. So congratulations, man. That's Thank awesome. You. It's also been pretty fun because like, then I can offer, even if some of the other students can't buy their own property, then I can rent to them for cheaper sure. nearby the university. Sure. And, you know, maybe it's going to help you in your finance business, too. Now other students see, like, hey, this guy figured it out. Mm -hmm. He must know something I don't know. Maybe I should go seek financial advice or your your career, you know, your day job, so to speak, is going to become more profitable just because you proved yourself. So it's awesome. Yeah, no, it'll be nice to add on to a resume when I go looking for a job this coming semester. Cool. Thanks for sharing. Of course. See ya.